Ever wonder what it looks like behind the scenes of the big name brokers in the industry? The TQLs, CH Robinson, Echo, and the rest? Well, stick with us as we discuss their structures and their pros and cons in this week's video. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation sales tips and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're a fan of the content, please support us by crushing that like button and sharing us with all of your colleagues. And for more information on our freight brokerage course, Freight Broker Basics, be sure to click the link in the show notes or go to freight360.net for more free training material. Okay, let's start with the big boys in the industry. TQL, Echo, CH Robinsons. These companies have similar approaches to sales, but with some major differences in structure. Now, as it relates to sales, they typically strive for high volumes of loads at low cost. TQL is known to be one of the more expensive brokers from the point of view of the shippers or their customers, and they'll sell on service to justify that increase in cost. Where CH Robinson is notorious for providing dirt cheap rates to their customers, and those customers are willing to typically accept lower service for that discount. Now the differences in structures. TQL and Integrity Express, for example, are two of the large freight brokers that are structured as cradle to the grave model. This is much more common also in smaller brokerages that you might see. And what this means is that each broker is responsible for every task in the process. They have to hunt the leads, contact the prospects, close those prospects, win loads or shipments, then source the carrier for the load, negotiate the rate with the carrier, check call the load for tracking and tracing while running the load, notify the customer of any updates, and finally, but certainly one of the most important responsibilities, make sure that their customers are paying their bills before they get paid commission. Now, CH, Echo, and XBO, and many of the others are structured in what is referred to as the pod model. This is where the sales reps are responsible for hunting the leads, closing the prospects, and winning loads to run. There is an entire department that handles the carrier side of the business, the sourcing, negotiating, and track and trace tasks. The sales reps only are responsible for winning the business and making sure that the customers are paying their bills. Now, in the cradle to the grave, there are a few advantages. First, you have full control over every aspect of service you're providing to your customers. If something isn't done correctly or fast enough, you have the ability to fix it immediately and take steps to prevent this from happening in the future. You also have the ability to negotiate directly with your carriers, and this helps provide a much better insight into what's going on in the carrier market and what the drivers are experiencing. For instance, if you have a shipper that's very slow to load and carriers are asking for a premium or a higher rate than normal on that lane, just to pick up that load from your customer. Now you can relay this information directly back to your customer when they complain that maybe your rates are a little too high. And you can suggest things to improve on their loading site that might help reduce all of their transportation costs. And this is just really a great example of how you can provide value more like a consultant, not just someone that slings and hustles freight. Now some of the drawbacks. It's very difficult to scale up a book of business in this model. If you're doing the job correctly and you're striving to grow each week, each month, and each quarter that you're there, you'll need to learn to delegate and find efficiencies in everything you do. Every minute is precious since you only have so many every day. And if you want to earn more, you'll need to find ways to do more with less. Most companies will let you grow your team to help you as you add more customers and more shipping volume. However, it's usually done in hindsight. And what that really means is you've got to maintain your growth for a period of sometimes two to three months before that company will allow you to hire a new team member to help you. So for example, maybe if you find that you really do need help when you're running maybe 25 loads a week, you might have to sustain a larger volume or higher volume than that of maybe 30 to 35 loads per week 
for maybe a few months before they'll actually let you hire an assistant. Now, each company has its benchmarks and they are usually done by gross profit margin. So once you've earned enough profit for the company you're working for, for a long enough period of time, then they'll let you hire your assistant. You are, in essence, having to earn the company enough money to cover that assistant's salary before they'll let you hire them, right? So they're putting the risk on you. Now, in the pod model, this can be great for sales reps since technically they have less tasks they're responsible for. However, the commission percentages usually reflect this, meaning there's only so much profit generated by each shipment moved to cover all of the expenses of the freight brokerage. And if the company has to pay an entire department of people managing half of the responsibilities, that money has to come from somewhere. And part of it will come from the commission paid to the sales reps. So you will get a smaller piece of the pie, but you'll have much more time to bake more pies, meaning you don't have those things getting in your way of prospecting and doing more sales related functions. This can be a great fit for those people out there that love engaging with customers, love to be out there shaking hands and talking to new people, but aren't the best fit for organizational details or detail oriented things, right? It allows them to really play to their strengths. There are pros and cons, right? To each of the way these larger companies operate and working with any large company, no matter their structure, will also have benefits and drawbacks. Usually, as a rule of thumb, you'll probably earn a little less on each transaction, but you can leverage the size of the company you're working for and their brand recognition to do more volume. The thing to consider before deciding on whether you're gonna work with a big box broker or a smaller brokerage or to open your own freight brokerage is what you're really looking for in this career and what your personal strengths and weaknesses are. Are you the type of person that loves details but hates putting yourself out there? Maybe you're built for operations at a large or small brokerage. Are you the type of person that loves to handle everything and are willing to do whatever it takes to keep as much of the profits as possible? Then you're more likely a fit to start your own freight brokerage. And if that's the case, check out our website, freight360.net for more information on our freight broker course, Freight Broker Basics where well, you'll learn everything you need to earn to earn a living as a freight broker and what it takes to build a successful freight brokerage of your own. And remember, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right.